Chess research begins in the 1960s with a couple of key ideas. One, expert players are better than weaker players because they have better overall memories. Two, expert players are better than weaker players because they can read ahead more deeply in the game. The research exploring chess would explode these ideas and transform how psychologists thought about chess and about expertise. The earliest experiments were simple. You flash an image of a chess position on the screen just for a couple of seconds, and then you ask the research participant to recreate what they saw. The first set of experiments looked at meaningful, realistic chess positions that come up, say, in, in, in games that you would play. And the gap between expert chess players and weaker players was very large. Experts could just recreate these board positions more accurately. But if you ask research participants to recreate a board position of random chess pieces, the gap between expert players and weaker players shrinks. And in some cases, it's eliminated entirely. And then if you ask these players to recreate positions of random shapes instead of actual chess pieces, but they're still arranged on a chess board, the difference between experts and weaker players shrinks even more. And then if you ask players to recreate random shapes on a screen without the benefit of a chess board or anything like that, the gap just disappears. So chess players do not have a stronger memory generally. They have a stronger memory for chess specifically. And the closer that you get to a realistic, meaningful chess scenario, the more that the expert shows their strength. How can people develop memory that's really good just for one specific thing? Turns out everyone does this. It's a basic part of how our brain works. Working memory in all humans is limited. That's the memory that kind of is your mental scratch pad. You can kind of hold things in there for a little while and manipulate them a little bit and connect them to other things. But it is a very, very limited resource. The brain gets around this with a process called chunking. If you experience the same kind of stimuli, like, say, chess boards over and over and over again, what the brain starts to do is to group these into larger and larger pieces. So in the beginning, when you're first playing chess, you might just remember a piece or maybe two pieces that are related to one another. But with practice, what your brain does is it starts perceiving pieces in groups. So you see groups of pieces together in your mind's eye, and pretty soon you can see maybe whole board positions together. Now, as time goes on and you work with the same kind of patterns over and over again, your chunks get larger and larger and larger. And it seems like they can just get arbitrarily large. So better memory for these chess positions comes from extensive experience in the chess domain and our brain's cool ability to chunk information into larger and larger parts. What about the idea that experts read more deeply than other players? Strategy games like chess involve a series of decisions that lead to different game states. Now you might think, well, experts, they probably see pretty far ahead. Maybe they see 10 or 20 moves ahead at a time before they make their move. And maybe stronger players, they see maybe six or seven moves ahead. And the weakest players, maybe they only look like one or two moves ahead from where they are. And that's what makes the expert players so good. But it doesn't work like that. It's true that very weak players can't look far ahead. If you just learn how to play chess, you're not gonna be reading, you know, four or five moves ahead. But if you look at good players and great players, the difference in how deep they read ahead is pretty much non-existent. So the classic study found that both types of players, both strong and expert players, looked about four moves ahead. But that, that may have changed a little bit since the 1960s, I don't know. But it's not the depth of search that is distinguishing the expert from the strong player. So why are expert players better? Well, it turns out that they pick better moves. They can evaluate candidate moves from a board position more effectively at each one of those decision points. This makes expert players different from weaker players, but it also makes expert human players different from AI programs who can play at basically the same level or better. We've been talking about knowledge, knowledge of the game and understanding game states and search, right? Making the decisions and kind of looking ahead to see what decisions are gonna be best. Humans leverage knowledge about the game and use abstract ideas like uh, controlling the center, for instance, 
to think more intelligently about the game state and evaluate single positions. But AI programs rely more heavily on search. The interesting point is that you can reach high levels of skill in different ways. So this was a small window into the mind of a chess expert, but there's a lingering question. How did the expert get to have this mind in the first place? The answer to that question is in an upcoming video. I'll see you there.